and welcome to NYSI's Science Learning Series. I'm Jenny. And I'm Sophie. Jenny and I are science instructors at the New York Hall of Science, and today we are going to talk about a fascinating phenomenon in the known universe. Have you ever wondered why when you drop something it falls down instead of up? And why the moon stays circling around us in the night sky? Or what holds our atmosphere in place? Well, we're going to learn the answers to all of these questions and more today in this 15-minute video all about that great force that keeps us grounded. Gravity! Gravity. <laughs> to do these activities along with us, you will need the following supplies. String, a few paper clips, two water bottles, two pieces of scrap paper, a disposable cup, and a pencil. Pause here if you need to gather these materials. Let's talk a moment about gravity and what gravity is. Gravity is a force and a force is a push or a pull. Gravity is a force that brings objects together. Hmm. Does that definition surprise you? When we think about gravity, we tend to think about a force that pulls us towards the earth not something that exists between objects. Gravity's pull is dependent on its mass. Mass is a measurement of how much matter or stuff makes up an object. So a really big planet with a really big mass has a stronger gravitational pull than a teeny tiny planet with a teeny tiny mass. So for example, if you could travel to Jupiter, which is the biggest planet in our solar system, you would actually feel much heavier standing on Jupiter's surface than you're used to feeling on Earth because the bigger mass means a stronger gravitational pull, and you could definitely feel that. Versus if you went to Mercury, for example, which is a very small planet with a smaller mass, the gravitational pull is weaker, and so you would feel much lighter as you stood on Mercury's surface. So let's return to what we said about gravity and all objects having gravity. It might surprise you that you have gravity too. Hmm, you must be wondering, well, if I have gravity, why don't I see objects sticking to my hands or objects orbiting around me like the moon does the Earth? Hmm, well, it goes back to what we said about mass, that the Earth's mass is much bigger than our own, and it overpowers our gravitational pull. So how can we feel our own gravitational pull? Well, what you would have to do is travel deep, deep into space all by yourself and go to a place where there's no planets, no stars, no moons, nothing, nothing to overpower your own gravitational pull. And if you were to go and travel with a tennis ball and release the tennis ball, it would be overpowered by your gravitational pull and start orbiting around you like the moon does the Earth. Pretty cool, huh? But we are not in space. We are on Earth. And the experiments that we're going to do today have other forces at play other than gravity, such as air resistance and frictional force against a moving object. Let's do a quick demonstration. If you have a pencil, some paper clips, and some string, you can do this activity along with me. If not, pause here to go get some supplies. Once you have all your supplies, tie the paper clips to the pencil with the string so that they're dangling down freely, like this. In my case, you can see I'm using a ribbon, a binder clip, and a carnival ring. So we've been talking about the idea that gravity isn't pulling us down precisely, but rather it's pulling us in towards the earth. And we can actually see that by looking at the way these objects dangle from the pencil. Right now they are down relative to the pencil. But if we move the pencil around, will the objects change the direction that they're dangling? Before starting any experiment, scientists always start with an educated guess or hypothesis. Pulling on all the knowledge that you already have, think about what you guess or hypothesize is the answer to that question. Can you get the paper clips to dangle away from the Earth? 
Pause here to try it out yourself. You have probably found that no matter which way you turn the pencil, sideways, upside down, all around, the objects will always dangle in towards the earth, even when they're tangled. The only way to overcome the earth's gravitational pull is to involve another force. For example, my own strength is enough to lift the object up and defy earth's gravity. Magnets can also be used to defy gravity, as long as the object is made out of iron. Now I'm wondering if there are other forces that affect gravity. Let's turn over to Sophie to explore this more. Wow, Jenny, that was really cool. Can I try? Ooh, very cool. Imagine this. Imagine you're on a tall building just like the Empire State Building, and you were to drop a big heavy bowling pin and a light tennis ball. What do you think would happen? Which would land first? Hmm. Well, we can't go on top of an Empire State Building, but we could try something on a smaller scale together. For this experiment, you're going to need two water bottles. One completely full, the other one half full. I put food coloring in these two so you could see it better, but you don't need food coloring. If you need a moment, you can pause the video and gather your materials. Let's make a hypothesis. What do you think will happen if we drop these two water bottles with different masses at the same time? height. Hmm. Take a moment to make a hypothesis and then we'll try it out together. Let's try this experiment together. You're going to take your two water bottles, stand up, and you're going to hold it out in front of you. Make sure they're the same height. If it's hard to tell, put them together and then pull them apart. You're going to also have to drop them at the same time. Now let's see what happens. What happened with your water bottles? How does gravity affect something that's light versus something that's heavy? Hmm, well, let's go see what happened with my water bottles. Now, let's see what happened with the slow-mo cam. Even though one water bottle is twice as heavy as the other, we can see that they land at the same time. Gravity has the same pull on both objects, so they fall at the same speed. We can see that some objects drop and land at the same time, like the two water bottles. Thinking back to our Empire State Building example with the bowling pin and a tennis ball, how would these objects land? Hmm. Well, if we think about our experiment we just did, these objects would both drop and land at the same time because gravity has the same pull on them and they would be falling at the same speed. But you have probably thought of other examples where objects drop and don't land at the same time. For example, a feather and a water bottle. If we were to drop those at the same height, the water bottle would drop and land first, and then the feather would come after. Hmm. But why is that? Gravity is extremely powerful and has the same force and pull on both objects. Well, the reason why is because there are other forces at play. 
for this experiment, you're going to need two sheets of paper. One you're going to leave flat. The other one, you're going to take it and you're going to crumple it into a ball. If you need a moment to get your materials, you can pause the video here. Let's make a hypothesis. We have our two papers. One is flat and one is in a ball. What do you think would happen if we dropped them at the same height? Would they land at the same time? Would they fall at the same rate? Think about it. And then we'll do the experiment. We're going to try this experiment together. Now, take your piece of paper and your crumpled up paper, stand up and hold them at the same height. Now, if it's a little hard to tell, you can put the two hands together and then separate them. And then you could try this a couple of times if it's hard to tell which one lands first. What did you notice happened with your two papers, the flat one and the crumpled up one? Which one landed first? Hmm, well, let's go see my experiment and see what happened. Now, let's check out the slow-mo cam. What happened? When we look at my pieces of paper, it's very clear that the balled up paper hits the ground first. We know that both papers are around the same mass and that gravity has the same pull on both objects anyways. So what gives? The flat paper encounters more air resistance. The air beneath the paper is pushing up and slowing down the fall. With a big flat piece of paper, there is more area for the air to push against, so it can slow down the paper more. The crumpled up paper is smaller in shape and it cuts through the air better. And it falls and is not slowed nearly as much as the flat paper is. We discovered that there are objects with different masses that drop and land at the same time, like the two water bottles. However, we also discovered that there are other forces that can affect how an object falls, such as air resistance with the two different papers. Now we're going to see what experiment Jenny has for us and learn more about gravity. Take it away, Jenny. Now that we know that Earth's gravity pulls on all objects equally, let's explore a little deeper. For this activity, you're going to need a disposable cup. Also, it involves water, so you might want to do it over a sink or a bathtub or anywhere else where it's okay to get a little wet. To begin, take your cup and have an adult help you carefully poke a hole in the bottom with a pencil or another sharp object. Hold your cup over the sink or bathtub and cover the hole with your finger. Fill the cup with water, taking care to keep the hole covered. Hypothesis time. What do you think will happen when you release your finger from the hole? Once your hypothesis is ready, you can go ahead and move your finger. Pause here to try it yourself. What happened? What you probably saw was a lot of water pouring out through the hole, being pulled down into the sink by Earth's gravity. You were holding the cup in place, but the water was able to easily escape through the hole because it is a liquid. If you were to release the now empty cup, it will be swiftly pulled down by gravity as well. Now, refill the cup with your finger covering the hole and hold it out over the sink again. What do you think will happen if you release the water and the cup at the same time? Think about what you learned with Sophie about the rate at which things fall. Once you have your hypothesis, you can let go. Try to release the cup so that it can fall straight down. Pause here to try it yourself. What did you observe? You may have noticed that while the water might have spilled out the top of the cup when it hit the sink, it did not come out the hole. Why would that be? Just like with the two water bottles you dropped earlier, gravity is pulling on the cup and the water equally. 
So in theory, if you drop the cup in some sort of vortex where it would fall forever and never hit the ground, the water would stay inside of the cup the whole time. It would never escape out the hole, due to the fact that they'd be falling at the same rate. Thank you for spending time with us learning all about gravity, the force that attracts all objects. You've got to explore all the wild ways that Earth's gravity works on various objects. And how air resistance, the frictional force that air exerts against all moving objects, impacts the rate at which things fall. Come back next time to learn how scientists and you get to break all of those rules in our Roaring Rocket session. See you next time!